there's an incredible amount of anger running through my veins right now. Tonight, I am experiencing a level of emotion that I have never, and I mean never, ever experienced before. In a way, I hate looking at myself on camera as I record this on, uh, through the whole webcam thing on YouTube, whatever. <clears throat> There's just an incredible amount of discontent for certain members of our society who don't deserve that. They don't deserve it at all, but it's still happening. And it's been happening for decades. I'm still trying to put my finger on why. Some of my friends say that it's because of religion. And I'm not denying that that has a great deal to do with it. But there's something deeper. There is this miscalculated interpretation of human nature going on when it comes to bigoted attitudes towards people of different races or sexual orientation, gender identity, certain disabilities, whatever have you. There's a lot of conditions that people don't choose. They are either born into this world that way, or something happens when it comes to disability. Sometimes a person can be injured so severely that uh, joints or nerves can be damaged to the point where they are rendered disabled. And uh, there's nothing that can be done to, re to uh, heal from that. But these people are alive. They're human beings nonetheless. In both developed countries and war-torn nations, dictatorships, third world countries, it doesn't really matter where you're looking at in this, in this world. There is always a group of people or a variety of different demographics, minorities, or other small sects of society who are being discriminated against, dehumanized, and the majority goes along with some kind of ideology or belief structure that justifies that prejudice. Sometimes it goes deeper than prejudice. It's just a downright animalistic, seething hatred for a certain kind of people. And sometimes we can see this manifest itself within one of these minority groups. For example, being gay myself, I have experienced some pretty demeaning behavior from other gay people in Atlanta. In fact, some of the most uh, some of the most hard-hitting, bullish, you know, what is I don't even know the fucking word to use for this. They're bullies, but that's kind of an immature word to use for me. There's got to be something more uh, applicable to adults that I can use. I'm talking absolutely psychotic people. Some of the most abusive, I guess that's a okay word to use, some of the most abusive people that I've ever met have been other gay people in Atlanta. And that is really something else to me. Because having experienced total dehumanization in uh, grade school, 
starting in kindergarten all the way through the year that I left high school. There are there were times where in um, the popular gay bars in Atlanta, I I uh, ran across people who were just the kind of people that can really cut into you. They don't have to hit you. They don't have to use weapons. All they need is their words and their brain. And they can really get at you. That combined with the fact that there are... There are people who... You know, I have so much on my mind tonight. I'm trying to find the right words to use. I've been drinking and dealing with some personal issues here in this very household. But I'm not going to give up on this. There are people who are bi-curious to bisexual in nature and they keep it to themselves and they they lash out at people who actually are gay. People like me who are 100% and out of the closet, they seek us out as a target because they're so afraid of their internalized emotions and desires. A lot of these people are accused of being closet homosexuals. That's not true. A majority of them are not actually 100% homosexual. They are bi-curious to bisexual in nature. And it's mostly the men. They come after guys like me because they want to feel like they have gained some kind of retribution for their own emotions and feelings on the inside. I was just reading an article uh, from New Zealand, actually. It was a... Um, a related article to something about homophobia in uh, football over there. It was about how in gym class, PE, people learn their prejudices against gay people. And that makes a lot of sense to me because when I was in high school and taking that mandatory PE class, I was completely dehumanized because I was the gay in the class. The only one. And I'm pretty sure maybe three or four of the guys were bisexual or bicurious types. Those were the ones that came after me. And the authority figures, the coaches that oversaw all this, just let it happen. They were so ignorant in their heads, their IQs so low, that they let it happen. And they had no idea how to stop somebody like me from being dehumanized. I passed the class with the lowest grade possible, a 69.5. I'm surprised they even gave me that kind of mercy. It's probably because they didn't want to see me in there again, because I was an open gay kid. Nobody ever picked me to play on their team. I was always off to the side, and one of the coaches told me to just walk. Just walk to do some kind of movement, and they were always giving me the side eye with an eyebrow raised. And the other guys were always calling me fag and wanting to push me around. That have, That's something that will affect me for the rest of my life. That's one of the reasons why I never gained any success in life. Even in the gay community, I'm at the lowest rung of the ladder because of what happened to me in my ninth grade year of high school and beyond. We've got to stop allowing the systematic dehumanization of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. This is not a choice. It's really all about biology. And if you ask me, and I know a lot of people are offended at this idea, any type of prejudice or 
or um, <clears throat> lack of equal treatment in general, lack of equal treatment uh, towards LGBT people, that's no different than racism. And the sad thing about that is there's still a lot of fucking racism going on in our society. We haven't even got that out of the way yet. So, this marriage equality issue that's coming up next month, if I actually do gain the right to get married to another man in my home state of Georgia, which is one of the few remaining states that is holding on to this stupid discriminatory ban on equality, that's really just... That's a granule of sand when looking at the big picture. That's just a granule of sand. There is a huge problem here. I'm angry about it. I'm hurt by it. And there's a lot of other people out there who are angry and hurt on a daily basis. And we're seeing an increasing number of LGBT students and adults alike committing suicide because of this continuing, almost seemingly intrinsic discrimination that we experience in this country. Most of us are not violent people. We're not out there taking to the streets rioting. There was a little bit of an incident when the Stonewall raid happened back in the 60s and more recently, when Proposition 8 passed, there were some streets blocked and shit like that. Things just aren't that violent when it comes to LGBT issues, and I'm not saying that I have a problem with that. It's just that there are... Not there are. There is a lot of willful ignorance when it comes to the issues that people like us face. Something's got to give here. Something's really got to give because we've still got systematic dehumanization of LGBT youth in our schools. And if that's compulsory, the government is going to be held responsible. I'm still holding them responsible for what they forced me to go through. Because education is compulsory, don't think for one second, and this applies to every member of every public school board in this country, every principal, every superintendent, don't think for one second you're not going to be held accountable because you make school compulsory or the government of this country makes school compulsory. That means that we're forced to face egregious abuse. You're part of the problem. So let's stop abusing LGBT kids. Let's start educating people and moving beyond these stupid religious beliefs that say that we're immoral. Or else, we're not going to be so peaceful in the future. Just some food for thought. We need to stop this abuse of power, the bullying, and all this other mess that we're dealing with. I'm going to continue speaking out about it because I can.